Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here from Kelby One, and I've got a, another tutorial for you. Another start to finish all in Lightroom, no plugins, no presets, no HDR, just taking a shot from beginning to end. And the one I want to show you is, is this photo. So this was actually taken in the Palace of Versailles in France. <laughs> and it, of course, <clears throat> it didn't really look like this. Now, when I looked and saw this spiral staircase, I'm a sucker for spiral staircases, but when I looked, it, it, it didn't look like this. It also didn't look like what my camera captured. I'm going to show you the before picture. Here's the before. Yeah, didn't look like that either. Here's why. When you're standing there, my eye, of course, sees all the stairs and all the detail. It doesn't see this blue color cast that's created by, um, basically created by the fact that I'm using auto white balance on my camera. It doesn't see any of this stuff. It looks tremendously different. When I take my camera and I compose the shot, it looks like this. And so, of course, when you open it up, you're very disappointed that what you saw with your eyes looks nothing like what your camera captured. So this is the final image, and I'm going to take you through beginning to end how to get to this final image. But if you want a quick preview, you can see I adjusted the white balance. I made it a little brighter. I added some contrast. Pulled back some highlights, opened up the shadows, but I want you to see the whole process. And there's some stuff that you don't see, some secret stuff that's in here. So let's start off by just hitting the reset button and let's reset it to where we started. All right. So the first thing I like to do when I look at an image like this is figure out what's wrong with it. And I can pretty much tell you it's, it's everything. <laughs> um, basically, here's what I see. This is all blue and it's a little bit too bright. So where am I trying to get you to look? It's a spiral staircase. I'm trying to get you to look right down here. So this is the focal point of the photo, right? This is distracting stuff and it is blue. And again, it didn't look blue to my eyes while I'm standing there. That is the auto white balance playing tricks on you. Okay, I can't see the stairs. So that's the first thing I'm gonna try to fix. So let's, one, one quick way to do this is to just hit auto and give you a starting point. Well, it's an ugly starting point, but it's a starting point. As you can see, the exposure got cranked up a bit. Shadows got cranked up. I can see better. It's not enough in the shadows in these dark areas. That's still too dark, so we can crank that up some more. Of course, once you, once you do that, the photo looks very flat, so I'm going to increase the contrast a bunch. Now, the blue really stands out quite a bit, so let's just go to the temperature. Now, without me explaining how this works, if I wanted to make this photo more yellow, which way would I drag? <laughs> okay, over to the right. So I'm gonna drag it way over that way. So just those little changes there, just clicking the auto button, increasing the contrast, and making the image warmer, look how much better it looks. If I wanna make it warmer yet, maybe I could go away from green, cause this looks kinda of icky here. Let's go towards red, make it a little, little bit warmer there as well. So I'm adding some, not red, adding some magenta. So now, at this point, the rest are kind of problems. Number one, I can see a bare bulb. <laughs> That's not good. We'll deal with that. This is all kind of too bright up here, and it's not as yellow as everything else, so we can deal with that. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do once I've got the kind of basic stuff here, oh, by the way, there's a lot of texture here, so I want to add clarity, right? Clarity is what I think of when I want to bring out texture. So let's just crank up the clarity a little bit. You can see that controls the mid-tone contrast. And one other thing that I can see I don't like, spiral staircase, I'm losing detail down there in that part of the staircase. So at this point, we're going to switch to the adjustment brush. So the adjustment brush allows us to kind of adjust individual areas in our image. I want to get rid of the, uh, I want to make that a little less bright. So let's just double click on the word effect that zeroes everything else out. And I can either lower the exposure or more likely let's lower the highlights because it's a bright area. And let's just bring that down a bit. So that brought some detail back to the stairs. All right, easy enough. Next, we need to darken this whole area. If you want to paint someplace new and leave what you had intact, you have to go and click this button right here. New. So let's click that. New. There we go. Double click on effect to zero everything else out and we're going to darken where we paint. So we're going to paint over this part of the railing here. And let's just paint over this and get this darkened down a bit. Alrighty, so that did pretty well. Actually, that's a little bright right here too. Let's just paint that much. I'm just trying to make it all kind of even. And maybe we can take off some highlights too. That'll help a little bit. Yeah, there we go. 
All right, because I'm trying to get you to look down here. I don't want you to look. Don't be distracted with this over here. Maybe that little bit right there in there too. Okay. All right, we're pretty close. A um, couple things that we need to do. Number one is, while I've got this painted in here, I might actually add a little more yellow and a little more magenta in there so it matches the colors better over here. This is very warm over here. This was still kind of brownish and cold. Let's add a little more warmth to that. Alrighty, now uh, from the last video I did, you saw one of the things that I like to do as a finishing move is to darken the edges all the way around. So let's uh, go down to the effects panel and let's go to post cropping vignette and let's drag to the left. I go to my magic number, minus 11. That darkens the edges kind of around just a little bit. Look at the difference. Kind of darkens those edges and focuses your attention back in the middle. So maybe you won't notice this little out of focus thing that probably needs to go away. Um, next, I use something that you're supposed to use for something else. I use dehaze. Why did I use the dehaze slider? I thought that was for getting rid of fog and getting rid of mist and things like that. You know, it actually is, but it's a, a different kind of contrast. So the contrast slider does one kind of contrast. The dehaze does another. So let's crank up the dehaze and see what it looks like. Looks pretty good right in there. And actually, I'm going to go now. I got that at like 47. I'm gonna to go to the adjustment brush, double click on effect to zero everything out. It has its own dehaze. I'm gonna paint it over the stairs here, right in those areas and right here where it's a little too bright. And see how that looks right there. There we go. Well, actually that, that last part may have been a touch too much. I'm gonna hit Command Z on Mac or Control Z on Windows to undo that. And and now really I just have one step left and that would be to get rid of that light. So there's a tool for that. Let's go get rid of the spot removal tool. And let's just kind of click right over the light. And now you can see it shows the worst possible place in the world to sample from up here on the railing. So we're gonna go, no, no, no. Please choose something a little better. Certainly you can do better than that. Let me move this a little and see if we can get it to line up better. Whoops, a little more, a little more, a little more. This isn't going to be perfect, right? But it'll be, you know, in the ballpark. And let's see. Okay, that looks pretty bad. Let's increase the feather amount and see if we can hide that a little bit better. That looks pretty bad, really. All right, so now that we've over we've overdone it, let's, let's adjust that a little bit and see if we can come up with a little better fix than that. I may have gone overboard with the feather amount, which is why you're starting to see a little bit of that edge of the uh, let's of the lamp. Yeah, this is not this isn't going to win any awards for like best patching of the year. Well, that's really really sad. Let's pretend that you're going to spend more time finding the right spot to get rid of that than I'm going to, because this would really get old shortly. But I was able. Uh, in my final image that I put on Instagram to get rid of that in a much more meaningful way than I've done. This looks so bad, I'm just going to just get rid of it. So that was just really, really bad. Let's get a smaller brush. <laughs> Sorry, I know that I could just go on here, but I really, I just can't. I think I might have made my initial brush a little bit too large. The uh, feather probably shouldn't be that high. Here we go. Let's see if we can do a better job. Still chooses a horrible place but we don't have to choose nearly as horrible spot. Let's see if I can do a little better. I think anybody could do better than that. All right, well, that's not good. You're gonna mess around with the feathering amount until you find that sweet spot that I have not been able to find that uh, looks better because I was, well, you saw in the, in the original image, I did a lot better job than that. Pretend that doesn't exist, pretend it looks good, and then we're pretty much done. So that's the the before and after here with the bad patch of the uh, of the light. It was really just a, a sad job, but I will not make you s sit through me trying again and again until it looks good. Eventually, it would look good, but I think we'd kind of be old. Anyway, thank you guys for <laughs> letting me show you that. Uh, if you're into Lightroom, I teach a ton of Lightroom stuff at kelby1.com. We have tons and tons and tons of full-length in-depth classes all on Lightroom. I would love you to go check it out. You can take a 10-day free trial and watch any class you want from me and a whole bunch of other Lightroom experts. 
um, just sign up for the 10 day free trial. And if you want to learn Lightroom live in, in three days, we'll teach you so much your head will explode. Come and join me at Photoshop World. Uh, that is in Las Vegas, July 19th through 21st. For more information, go to photoshopworld.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Kelby1. We put up all kinds of crazy stuff like this. Thank you all for watching. Take care, everybody.